Track Editor is a great way of working with controllers in 3D Studio Max. Let's work with this teapot. Currently, right now, by default, it shows the transform properties on the teapot. We can also show modifier properties. For instance, we have a Turbo Smooth modifier, and we could change its iterations to two. We also have the Show Object properties, where we could deal with and work with things like the radius, or maybe the segments to smooth it out. We could also work with the materials and maps. In this case, it's showing a standard shader that has a noise map on it. Let's work with frozen controllers as well. I'll make a few copies of this teapot, select them all, right click, and freeze transform. You can now see the frozen transforms on all four of the teapots. Each track represents each one of the objects. The tracks are grouped together using the subanim path. So in this case, the X position of each of them is represented in the one track because, because each of them has the same path to that X track. Controllers that aren't animatable, like the base transform, comes in a dark gray. Or the position controller, which is the position list, comes in with a dark gray and shows an unkeyable icon. Frozen position comes in red because it resides inside of a list controller and the red states that it is a non-active controller inside of the list. The green is an active controller inside of the list and then light gray are tracks that are animatable, have controllers, but have yet to be keyed. Yellow represents tracks of animation that are animatable, but have yet to have a controller assigned to them. We can see the same thing in the rotations as well. Let's work with the list controllers, and I'll show you how the grouping functions. If we take the available track, we can highlight that in both position and rotation. Right click, and we can say, set default controller. This will place a default controller on that track. In this case, a position XYZ controller was added and an Euler XYZ controller was added for the position and rotation on every single one of the objects. For the available track again, we'll pick the availables, right click, and do the same again, set default controller. If you notice, nothing changed in the list. This is because we have on each of the objects a controller called position XYZ and two tracks. Open the dope sheet and we can see that here we have the frozen position track the zero position XYZ, the frozen, the position XYZ, and then a second position XYZ. The sub anim path to each one of these controllers is identical. Therefore, these get grouped together and aren't being shown individually. Let's do the same thing again. We'll freeze transforms again. Once again, we'll pick the available tracks, set default controller. This time, we'll rename these two controllers. Right click, we'll say, Rename list controller. We'll call it layer one. Each of these objects now has a layer one controller on it and those get grouped together. Now we can pick the available tracks again, right click, set default controller, and we could again pick both of them and rename them. These tracks aren't grouped anymore because their naming conventions differ. We can also set controllers active. If we decide that we want to work on layer one as we animate, all we need to do is pick layer one, right click, and say set list controller active. That controller becomes colored in green, and the original position XYZ and zero Euler XYZ are, are now in red. If we were to animate these controllers at frame 10 in the Z position by right clicking and scrubbing, and we'll rotate it around Z as well, here we have animation. You can see that the tracks have now turned red, and when over a key, they turn to a brighter red color. The weights of the tracks are also shown. In this case, we can see weight layer one currently says 100. If we pick both of those, we could dial that down to zero. Now we can see that the objects no longer move when the timeline is scrubbed. This is because the weight of those controllers has been set to zero. We could actually make this even easier. Let's set those back to 100 again. Well, let's consider that these controllers should do the same thing on all of them as an animation layer system should. So if the layer one weight is dialed down to zero on one of the objects, it should happen to all of the objects that are in the grouping. We can do this really easily by instancing the controller from layer one to each of the layer one controllers in both position and rotation. This can actually be done really easily with Track Editor. There's two ways of going about doing it. First, let's take the first teapot, find our weight layer one, right click on it and say copy controller. Now we could pick all of them, and we can take both of those tracks again, the layer one tracks in position and rotation, right click on them, and we can see that the controller has been copied by a 
check mark saying there's one currently in the buffer. Now we can say paste instance controller or of course paste controller. Paste instance will make an instance controller. If I take any one of these, see we have animation now, take the value of the layer one weight, dial it to zero, you now see that none of the actual objects move anymore and that's because all of their controllers are value of zero because they've been instanced together. Now let's do this in an even easier way. Let's work with the zero position track. We'll select all of the teapots now, pick the zero position and the zero Euler track, right click and use the instance selected controllers. This will take the first controller found in the tracks selected and instance it to all of the others. You can see that now when we scrub on one track, both tracks are being changed. And in fact, they're being changed on all of the objects because they now all have that instance controller on them. We can weight that track to zero as well, even with one object picked again. So there's very quick ways of being able to instance controllers together. You might decide that you don't want them instanced anymore and you want to break them apart again. We can highlight those tracks, right click, and choose Make Controllers Unique. Now those controllers are no longer tied together. Changing the value of 1, say to 100, we can see that the zero weights didn't actually change and on all the other objects they didn't change as well. We can also remove the keys on them. I've had Animate turned on all this time and we've been accidentally animating keys. We can right click in all of these and say Delete All Keys and remove all the animation controllers from them. Any time that you're working with controllers, for instance list controllers that have a dialog box, you can right click on the controller and use the open controller dialog to open up the dialog to be able to view the settings for it. This will work for any controllers like pram wires, script controllers, noise controllers, whatever it might be, as long as it has a dialog that can be opened. 